So I set these up a week ago. Last weekend? I don't remember. Last mm. video. Um, and I want to show you guys how they're doing. So they've all... So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 12. 12 breeding trays. And so we added them into the cocoa coir last week. And you can... You know what? I'll just dig in there because it's just cocoa coir. So they're in there. Mixed in. Come on. Where are you guys? There you go. So they've they've blended themselves into their new homes. They've chowed through the leftover worm chow that I have. I'll have to give them some more. Um, and so they've started the breeding process. So now let's talk koi. Because somebody mentioned it last time, and I didn't mention it in the video because I totally forgot. Some cocoa koi has a high salt content, so you need to rinse it really well. Um, like we did so we we soaked it last time we strained it got all the water out hopefully any salt that may have been in there um, because if you do not rinse it really really well you can kill your worms or they will try to escape so you want to be careful and you can see they, they've fully integrated in with the coir here um, and you see there's actually there's you know there's babies so I don't know if you can see that little baby worm but they're doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing in here and that is breeding making more baby worms so we can provide them to you all um, when you are looking for worms for your own worm farms so yeah they're doing good so here this one's, yeah see skinny little guys um, but they've made their way in mixed in with the coir. I'll make some of the food in there so they can get to it, but hey, plenty of worms. And since uh, uh, I just saw it, where is it? I don't know if I can find it again. Since this was our, the trays that we were experimenting on, ah, here is the leftover t-shirt material in there, so I need to pull that out. Um, which I will do now. Set that in my garbage tray. I don't know where my garbage tray is. Um, there we go. And, uh, so, I don't think there's any more parts up. Oh, there's a little bit. See, that's all that's left is the elastic. So they ate through the shirt and left me plastic and this stuff this stuff is the bane of my existence so we picked this out by hand because at one point a while ago I was collecting shredded paper from my customers and this stuff is the cellophane from windowed envelopes that went through a shredder well the worms don't like it it doesn't break down it it will probably sit in landfills for many many years um, but it got mixed in with the shredded cardboard that we give to the worms and I've been dealing with it for like a year now, pulling it out anytime I see it, anytime I find a batch of the shredding um, that had that bag of stuff in it and we stopped accepting any sort of shredding from any of our customers because of it. Um, it as soon as we caught it, we, we shut it down. But once it's in the system, it's there. Thankfully, the, the sifter that we use, um, the Brockwood Worm Shifter, I think is what it's called, um, does a really good job of pulling that stuff out of there. But then it's in, um, and it just keeps showing up. And so we basically have to do like a deep clean of every single worm bin to get that stuff out of there. So, um, we do not take shredded paper from anyone anymore um, because of that little mistake. Because I'll be dealing with it probably for years to come because it just, it, it sifts out and then some of the siftings go back into the worm bins and it just, every time we do a sift, it shows up. So we have to go through by hand and pull the stuff out. Um, 
and hopefully not go crazy. So, so be careful of that. Don't don't shred windowed envelopes. Um, pull the windows out, cut them out, throw them away. They can't be used in your worm bins. See, there it is. But the worms seem happy. They they leave it alone. They don't eat it. Um, so they don't mind that we made that mistake. But it happens. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the worm section. Now I'm going to show you the uh, chicken tractor that we got going on, which is why I didn't get a chance to build the worm um, tower that I wanted to show you guys. Hopefully next week, although I'm probably gonna build another tractor for the chickens. Um, so we'll see, but we'll definitely have something in, in the coming weeks because we need something for all these guys. So, all right. Okay, so. We are moving our chickens. We have 180 something that we started with. I think we've lost a few. We'll count them when we put them in here. But I wanted to show you the chicken tractor. So this is what is called a chicken tractor. So this is 10 feet by 10 feet. Um, I'm gonna build a second one because these chickens are gonna get big and they're gonna take over this thing very quickly. So it has a covered area so they get plenty of shade and this allows breezeways it is built with hardware cloth um, and then there's an opening right here and a feeder right there um, and that's just pvc cut in half with caps on it i got the idea from someone on tiktok um, and i thought it was a good idea so it'll make it nice and easy to feed them you just lift up the handle so twice a day when we feed them we could lift up the handle, pour feed into that, and they will be happy. So this is what it looks like. And we're gonna put it over, over there. You can't really see it right now. So I'll show you that um, just a minute and we'll get them loaded into the um, chicken crates. I'll show you that and we'll get them moved over. So now we load the chickens into our crates so i'm not sure how many we grabbed six so we'll see how many it actually takes to get them all loaded in there there they are They're a lot bigger than i thought i was estimating they were about the size of a can of soda and they are not they are much larger than that they're like a one of those large cans of soup or beans yeah. all right so now we get one person to wrangle them one person to put them in crates, and one person to hold the camera, and laugh. One person to scare the ball field. Josie, hop in and you scare them back this way. Don't step on anybody. Them. Or purge them. Motivate them. One, two. That's right, we gotta count them. I'm not wearing my muscles, I'm wearing my good shoes. Four. So we have their feeder full of feed. We have their water full of water right back there and the bucket on top. And uh, now we add chickens. I think we have 169 out of 185. So we've lost 16. One of those was a bonus, so I don't really count that bonus one. So I say we lost. No, we had 184. I think we started with 184. So, so we lost 15, but it's been weird weather too. It's been like hundred degrees in the garage and then it's been like today, it's like 60. So it's weird. All right, so we brought four crates over, so that's 80. So we'll count them and we'll get them in there. One hundred and sixty-nine chickens out on pasture that will get moved every day, at least once a day, maybe twice, depending on how much damage they do to this grass. It looks like they're already going to town on it. 
So I have a feeling they'll be moved at least once a day. And in the meantime, now that I have the garage freed up, I can build them another chicken tractor because as they grow bigger, they're going to definitely outgrow this thing. So we'll split them and we'll do 80 and 80. And possibly 40 and 40. We'll see how it goes. But you can see they've got the windbreak back there. There's some shade up on top here. There's your water. And then there's another shade area over here by the food. And you can tell that they're already going to town on the food. And trying to get every ounce of grass they possibly can. So we'll check in on them on the morning in the morning. And we'll see how they did uh, through the night. Hopefully they sleep well. Okay, so sometimes when you have a lot of chickens, you like to do fun things like hatch them. And so we have four new babies that hatched this yesterday. And one this morning. And one this morning. Yeah, this little guy was this morning. So we don't know what their breed is because we have one rooster that's a Easter egg. Oh, shit, that's actually really warm. Um, uh, one rooster that's an Easter egger, and we have Rhode Island Reds and Sapphire Gems and Isa Browns and... We know the one that hatched today is probably going to be an olive egger, Easter egger type layer because it came out of a green egg. But, who knows? Um, so they're in this little brooder, they're all hiding under the, the heat pad, which is, this is my favorite thing, except they like to sit on top and poop. Um, so we'll need to clean that. But, yeah, so now we have some new ones. And we may have to put them in something different instead of a cardboard box. <laughs> but I had the other ones in here, um, in, in this giant brooder. Um, but now that they're gone, we have some room to spread these guys out. So I may wall off a little area and just build a little sh mini shelter for them um, so that they can stay in one spot. So, cool. Come on. Come on, give us a move. Mm-hmm. <laughs>